Hey, how you doing? Haven't talked to you in a while. Thought I'd take this opportunity to catch up and say hello. Um, I have been active on Twitter, at Kevin Battle, and also posting some stories on Facebook and editorial or two. But I haven't put out a video recently in the last couple of weeks for good reason. Um, I have been looking for a job. So uh, I've been calling people. Basically, I'm a salesman at this point. Um, um, calling people, filling out resumes, um, talking about opportunities, potential opportunities down the road. Uh, I have a proposal uh, with a group here in Pittsburgh to do some radio. We'll see if that works out. If not, we'll find something great and uh, have a good life. But I just want to let you know that things are going well. What have I been doing? Well, besides looking for a job, I have been volunteering as well. So I find that that really balances out a day sometimes. You know, you're, you're making phone calls on your behalf and then you go volunteer for somebody else. And it's been very gratifying. So I appreciate that. I've also had some great friends who've uh, taken me out golfing a few times. And that's been wonderful with family and friends. And I'm still not very good, but um, I haven't embarrassed myself, I don't think. I don't know. Ask Joe Steele or Tab Douglas. Uh, <laughs> it's been, they're great, by the way. It's been fun uh, get, really getting out to enjoy the beautiful weather that we have in western Pennsylvania. I may take up fishing. Did you see this story in the Post-Gazette today? The Fish and Boat Commission here in Pennsylvania is releasing the apex predator back into our waters. The three rivers will now be home once again to the blue catfish. This fish has not been seen in our region for over a hundred years. And if it takes hold. They just released, um, they just stocked the waters near Point State Park and a few other places this week. If they, they take hold, these little fingerlings grow to adulthood, this will be the apex predator in our rivers. The catfish, the blue catfish can grow to 65 pounds. It's a voracious eater. They wonder if it's gonna affect the muskie. No, the professionals say that it will not affect, uh, affect the muskie, that uh, they, feed in different areas and have different habits. So it should be okay. We'll see how that goes. It'll take 20 years for this program to come to fruition. We'll see what, ha what, what happens. Maybe that'll be the next big thing, blue catfish. I did get to go to the pirate season finale yesterday. A very generous person uh, took me and I truly appreciate their hospitality. Uh, it was a great game and a beautiful day. And the pirates won. They ended the season on a high note. Uh, a little bit better than last season. So that's a good thing, right? Uh, one thing that I questioned, and you heard me say this on the air, I've always wanted to run, speaking of running your best lap, I always wanted to run in that pierogi race. Never got the opportunity. I wanted to run in that race. Um, that's why yesterday's performance and this whole past season's performance by Sauerkraut Saul has been just heartbreaking. He went, oh, and 81 in the performance this year. Oh, and 81. I don't know if I'd invite him to camp, uh, you know, spring training in Bradenton, Lecom Park at McKechnie Field. I don't know if I'd invite Sauerkraut Saul back there. Just a little question I have for President uh, Travis Williams. <laughs> but how about this? Sauerkraut Saul, my prediction, will take my advice, live his best life, run his best lap next season. He's going to work out just like we all should, and come back. They're going to have to give him a new pierogi uh, outfit. He's going to be buff and big, and he's going to dominate the first couple races. Hopefully he doesn't get hurt and uh, pull a hamstring or something like that and end his career. But I predict Sauerkraut Saul will win at least the first two races at PNC Park next year. All right, from pierogies to PA voting, uh, check this out. Pennsylvania has been moved up to the toss-up state for the U.S. Senate race between Dr. Oz and Lieutenant Governor Fetterman. Toss up. There was a big distance, a big gap. So speaking of races, that gap has closed in, West, in Pennsylvania and you have until October 24th to register to vote. So do your homework, vote for the candidate that uh, you feel will be best. And while you're doing that, remember this, while you're registering to vote here, remember to cancel your registration somewhere else. I've had to contact New Jersey about my voter registration. I have not lived there in a while, um, but I was getting texts, phone calls, and mail to my Pittsburgh address from new candidates in New Jersey. So I called the Bergen County Board of Elections 
and asked them about my voter registration. And I also asked them uh, if I voted in the last election. They said, no, everything's good and my registration is suspended, but you should check on that as well uh, if you've moved around. And when you are voting, think about this, $31 trillion. That is how much debt this nation is in right now. If we had a credit card, it would have the balance of $31 trillion on it. Why? Because Politicians in Washington, D.C. have spent us into oblivion. When the federal government, or when you say the federal government is going to pay for a program, they're not paying for it. The federal government is not an industry. It does not create wealth. It consumes and takes wealth. It takes your money. You're the person paying that $31 trillion in debt that they rang up. Okay, so remember that. I used to walk by the National Debt Clock. It's on between 6th and 7th Avenue in New York City. It's on West 44th Street. Uh, the numbers were crazy. I'd vomit my mouth half the time when I would look at it. They're so crazy that if we wanted to pay that $31 trillion as a nation right now, every single one of us living in the United States, man, woman, child, citizen, non-citizen, we'd have to cut a check for $94,000 each right now, and then we'd be even. If we each paid $94,000, we are slaves to our debt. It cripples us, it paralyzes us. We're slaves to debt. And it's really holding us back as a society. Um, $31 trillion, if every household in the United States would start cutting a check, you would have to pay $1,000 a month per household for 20 years to pay this off. It's just hideous, it's disgusting if you ask me. So keep an eye on that and remember that when you go to vote. Also, I was honored to uh, meet up with Ed Blank recently. Um, he is the former film and theater critic for the Post-Gazette and Trib. You've read his stuff. Unbelievable writer, tremendous writer, great person, great conversation. I asked him, Ed, Mr. Blank, what movie should I see if I see one movie right now? And ironically, speaking of living your best life and running your best lap, he said, Kevin, you want to watch The Best Years of Our Lives. It's from 1946, a bunch of actors you've never heard of. I told a friend about it. They said... Who starred in it? I said, what do, you, what do you care? You were born in 1973. You don't have any idea who was an actor in 1946. Although, Myrna Loy, pretty hot back in the day. So do yourself a favor, watch this movie. It's about three service members who come home from World War II uh, and reacclimate to society, uh, get to know their families again, and try to find jobs as we try to live our best life. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all of your thoughts and prayers and the questions you've had for me and the warm wishes as well. Have a wonderful day.